it is so good to have you back. I am so excited for today because we are learning about la langue d'amour. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Raylan and in this video today we are learning how to sing in French. Five tips for proper pronunciation. Now you may be thinking, okay, well, I know how to speak in French, so I should be able to sing in French, right? Peut-être, mais uh, je suis désolé. There are a lot of rules to follow when it comes to French song or the French melody, and it is known as an art song or a French aria. Welcome back to the Opera Diaries. I am Raylan, I am an opera singer, and if you like to sing opera, anything classical, if you are an opera enthusiast, or you're just here for my lovely French rounded lips, Hit that like button below and subscribe to this channel for more tips. So let's think about the French melody and the French aria. It is said that the French language is so complicated and very, diffi very difficult to sing. I don't think it's because the actual words are hard to sing. I think it's because there's such a difference between speaking French and singing in French. French has these nasal vowels, which we are always told to stay away from. Stay away from that nasal sound because it doesn't sound pretty. This video, I'm going to show you five tips on how to actually pronounce them correctly and sing them correctly to keep that beautiful flowing line to keep your singing very vibrant and beautiful and fully express what you want to through your words. I think it's one of the most beautiful languages to sing in, but I also think it's the most difficult, I will have to agree, because there are so many nuances and because there are so many differences between how we're told to sing technique-wise and how we're told to sing in French, specifically the glides and elisions and the nasality. So we're going to get to those points and leave a comment down below. Have you ever sung in French? What's been your experience? Is it difficult for you or is it not? Let me know. Tip number one for French pronunciation, we have the R consonant. Instead of saying a normal R, an American R, we're going to say a French R, which is very rounded. So say with me, amour, amour called the language of love because we're rounding our lips and bringing our lips together. Amour. So we want to really think about rounding our vowel, rounding as much as possible, and then adding a very, very light American R. Amour. You can say this with words like bonjour, amour, savoir, mariage. This is with any word that involves an R in it. It will always be the same. All you need to think about is very, very rounded lips and a very light American R and you're golden. Number two, elisions. So in French speaking versus French singing, we have something called elisions and that basically just means that we are connecting one vowel or one consonant together to form a better, smoother line. If we were using Ombre Légère, the shadow song from Dinora, there is a line called Tu chanteras à notre mariage. So that chanteras, that we would speak, chanteras à notre, that S is going to be elided and become a Z for a smoother sound. And this is going to become chanteras. We will also see this when two of the same vowels are together. So what do I mean by that? Also in the shadow song, it's in gratte, where we have two E vowels and they're going to be elided together. So we don't need to sing both E vowels separately. We're going to join them together and create this really nice elision. Now be very careful with this because this trips up a lot of French singers because this is not always the case to elide the vowels or consonants. So I would just suggest to ask your teacher, ask your vocal coach, what is the correct pronunciation in each case? Because there are very special cases that sometimes doesn't work with elision. And again, if we have a word that ends with a vowel going into a word that begins with a vowel, we would want to elide those. So chant avec, chant avec would be chant avec, chant avec, 
Shantavek. We would bring the T over to the Avek, and that would be nice and elided. Another rule of thumb is to watch out for the commas because those are definitely going to be separated. So if there was a comma between Shant and Avek, we would want to say Shant Avek. So there would be no elision in that case. Number three, we have the schwa or the neutral vowel that looks like an upside down E. Now this would be equal to the American O, uh, just a very relaxed vowel. So this is when we say fenêtre, je, cheval, leçon, livre. It's a very relaxed way of saying everything and it feels like you're almost spilling out of the vowel. We need nice and relaxed lips for this one. I like to almost think of it as an as an e uh sound. Also another really good tip that doesn't really have to do with pronunciation is especially for French melody, we want to think of nice, bright, crisp lines. It's not in Italian, Italian, where we are going with these dramatic, long legato lines. We want it to be bright and crisp as we're singing and also to lilt a little bit at the end of your line. If we're singing courants ensemble, we would say courants ensemble and just that nice little lilt at the end. That's how you sing a French line in the proper performance practice. Pronunciation number four, we have glides. Now glides tend to be a little bit smoother when we're singing them, so think nuit, sui, pui, lui. There's almost a W that occurs after the consonant that glides right into the vowel. We're basically just gliding into them and creating that nice smooth line and as I said there's almost a W or a Y and they're like Italian glides but they're a little bit more intense. So the N in nuit goes right to that I or that E vowel with a slight W that propels into that E. Another glide that we have that is the W is wa. That's when we're saying moi. Say this with me. Moi, voir, foi. It sounds very much like a W and it propels to the next vowel. Another very tricky vowel is the I vowel followed by any other vowel except for the neutral uh vowel. This is going to produce a Y sound or an E and a Y sound depending on the number and notes that are allotted to each sound group. So we have bien, bien, and you can really feel that crisp Y. So the B is going through the Y very quickly into the nasalized EH. Say it with me. Bien, ciel, and really feel that Y. Another glide is ILL, which after a vowel, it produces the Y as well. So think fille, which means girl. Say that with me, fille. Now there are some exceptions to that as well. The French language is full of exceptions. So again, be very specific in each word and know how to pronounce each word. This is just overall 90% of the time what the pronunciation can be. Which brings me to tip number five, which is of course the nasal vowel. Now before we go into how to pronounce them, because it is a lot different to sing them than to speak them, let's just go over the correct technique for actually singing them with a smooth line, which is the key and the goal to what we want to do. So usually we're thinking about lifting that high palate, lifting all of that juiciness so we can go up and over into that mask. And we're not thinking about having a sound that's very nasal. But when we're singing nasal vowels, we do want that nasally sound. So all you have to think about is keeping that nice soft palate, thinking about having that, that almost witch light nasal sound and just balancing out the two to where it feels comfortable for you and it sounds like you're making that sound. What will help you is making a darker vowel. So think about raising that soft palate and balancing that with your nasal vowel. So first we have the A nasal vowel and this is spelled many different ways. So we have A-N, enfant. So we have A-N and E-N. Say that with me. Enfant. What helps me when I'm singing is to just think about the pure vowels, don't think about the nasality of it at first, and then putting in a little flavor 
of nasality and that will get you the desired effect and to make it a little bit darker. Next we have the spelling A-M which is still the A nasal vowel. So say it with me, Champs, like Champs-Elysees, Champs. Next we have the E-A-N. So if we're saying Jean-Claude, it would just be that A nasal vowel. So say that with me, Jean, Jean. And then we have A-E-N, with this, which is C-Saint, C-Saint. We have A-O-N, which is again the A nasal vowel, which would be L'an. Long. So for the third person plural verb endings of ENT, that would just be the neutral vowel. And as we learned in the previous tip, the EN when it was preceded by an I or a Y is with the glide, like bien. And remember, for this vowel, we're thinking darker. We're not thinking that nice, bright ah vowel, darker ah vowel. And the lips are rounded more. So let's go to the E nasal vowel. Remember to keep your soft palate nice and lifted like it's floating, like we're yawning, we're sighing. And the E nasal vowel can be spelled in many different ways as well. Let's go through those. So we have I-N. So say this with me. Ch main Ch main Fin. Fin. I love film noir. Can be spelled I-M. Timbre. Say it with me. Timbre. Impossible. 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 It can be spelled E-I-N. Say it with me. Plein. Plein. It can be spelled E-I-M. It can be spelled A-I-N. Main. It can be spelled A-I-M. So let's take the word for hungry and say that together. J'ai faim. J'ai faim can be spelled Y-N. It can be spelled Y-M. Then, like time, that little ingredient that we sprinkle on. Or symphonie, symphony. And of course you know the I-E-N and the Y-E-N. Bien, ciel. The third vowel is the O nasal vowel. And that can be spelled a few different ways as well. So we have O-N, bon, bon. It can be spelled O-M. So like I said in the beginning, ombre légère. Or it can be E-O-N, two nasal vowels. So the first vowel is A, the second vowel is O, both nasalized. Mangeons. This means we eat. Mangeons. So unlike speaking, we normally use an en, a more open a vowel with the nasalized vowel as in mangeons. But when we're singing, so it's not confused with the A vowel, it's a more rounded O. So, mangeons. So it's a darker, richer sound that connects the line more smoothly and it sounds more correct. As I said, there are exceptions to this rule. It just depends on what word you're saying at what time, but these are just guidelines to help you go to the right direction of how they're actually supposed to be pronounced. I feel like I'm saying notify your doctor, <laughs> notify your vocal coach or your teacher to pronounce the words just so and just correctly. Of course, get some literature on this. And I would definitely listen to Natalie Dessay because she is a French singer and she has very good pronunciation techniques. So now that you know five tips for pronunciation, let me know if there's anything else you would like to know about the French language. It is just so beautiful and I am here to help you with pronunciation and diction. If you liked this video or found it a bit educational, please destroy that like button and hit that subscribe and join the coolest fraternity on YouTube. We have plaques, we have hand signals, we have none of that, but it sounds cool. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about classical music or singing. I'm here for you. Bye, Railiners. Thank you for watching.